Hello everyone, we're here from the Disability Resource Center. Today we're going to be discussing service animals, emotional support animals, and other laws that will apply to this and our FIU family. What you're going to learn today is the definition of a service animal and emotional support animal, how you can tell the difference between a service animal and emotional support animal, campus access for service animals and emotional support animals, what questions you're allowed to ask as per ADA regulations, what are the basic laws that apply to service and emotional support animals here at FIU? The legal reasons that you can deny or remove an animal in your area and what not to do. Some etiquette rules. And finally, what does the DRC recommend that you do in some common situations that you may experience with animals on campus? Service animal definition. A service animal means any dog or miniature horse that is individually trained to do work or perform tasks for the benefit of individuals with physical, sensory, psychiatric, intellectual, or other mental conditions. According to Florida Statute 413.08, service animal means an animal that is trained to perform tasks for an individual with a disability. Under this statute, puppies or dogs in training are also considered service animals. In continuation with the service animal definition, Work or tasks performed by a service animal must be directly related to the individual's impairment, such as guiding people who are blind, alerting people who are deaf, pulling a wheelchair, alerting and protecting a person who is having a seizure, reminding a person with mental illness to take prescribed medications, or calming a person with post-traumatic stress disorder, also known as PTSD, during an anxiety attack. Examples of service animals, guide dog or seeing eye dog, hearing or signal dog, Psychiatric service dog, SSIG dog, social signal animals, seizure response dog. Revised ADA regulations also include miniature horses. The definition of an emotional support animal. Under the ADA, comfort, therapy, or emotional support animals are not considered service animals because they have not been trained to do work or perform a specific task related to a person's disability. According to Florida Statute 413.08, a service animal means an animal that is trained to perform tasks for an individual with a disability. Under this statute, puppies and dogs in training are also considered service animals. Since emotional support animals are, have not been trained, they do not rise to the level required to be considered a service animal. Campus access and service animals. Service animals must be allowed to accompany people with disabilities in all areas of the facility where the public is normally allowed to go. Classrooms, dining halls, library, and resident halls. Please note that some areas of the campus are not allowed to have an animal inside. Some of these areas include labs and health service facilities. For more information on this, please contact the DRC and the leadership of the area that you are concerned about taking your service animal into. They will be able to guide you on some of these regulations and make sure that you and your animal are protected. Campus access for emotional support animals. Emotional support and therapy animals are restricted to a student's assigned dormitory, the immediate area outside the residence hall, off-campus housing, hospitals and therapy settings in regards to a therapy animal. Emotional support animals are not allowed in classrooms or in public spaces on campus unless they are trained service animals. Please note, FIU is not an authority that can recommend accommodations in facilities not owned by the university unless they are directly connected or related to an education experience required by a course that the student is enrolled in and that the accommodation request has been made to the DRC. How can I differentiate between a service animal and an emotional support animal? Federal law does not require the individual to provide documentation that an animal has been trained as a service animal. The university may, however, ask only the following two questions. One, is the dog or service animal required because of a disability? Two, what work or task has the service animal been trained to perform? Remember, a dog with a vest is not always a legitimate service animal. What may be follow-up questions? When it is not obvious what service an animal provides, only the questions mentioned are allowed. Staff cannot ask about a person's disability, require medical documentation, require special identification card or training documentation for the dog, or that the dog demonstrate its ability to perform the work or task. If the dog is being disruptive or you have any other concerns, please contact your supervisor or DRC so that we may assist. What happens next? The Disability Research Center will employ the following criteria to evaluate the presence of a service animal. 
The individual using the service dog has a disability. The animal is a service animal. The animal is trained to perform certain tasks related to the individual's disability. How was the animal behaving? What is the issue and in what setting did it occur? Some of the basic laws that cover service animals are listed here. Florida Statute 413.08 established on July 1, 2005. This law attempts to bring the state law in compliance with federal law. It covers puppies and dogs in training and is broader than the ADA. It covers an animal that is being trained. The Americans with Disabilities Act of 2008. The ADA is a civil rights law that prohibits discrimination against individuals with disabilities in all areas of public life, including jobs and schools. Under the ADA, colleges and universities must allow people with disabilities to bring their service animals into all areas of the facility that are open to the public or to students. Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 prohibits discrimination on the basis of disability in all housing programs and activities that either are conducted by the federal government or receive federal financial assistance. Fair Housing Act. The Fair Housing Amendments Act of 1988 requires housing providers to make reasonable accommodations for individuals with disabilities. Covered housing includes college and university housing, including dormitories and faculty housing. When can we exclude a service animal? If the service animal's behavior poses direct threat to the health and safety of others, and its behavior is not allowing the general business of the university to be conducted. Some examples of this are, the dog is being disruptive and not effectively controlled. The presence of the service dog would fundamentally change the nature of the classroom, course, or activity. The service dog's presence, behavior, or actions pose an unreasonable or direct threat to property and or the health and safety of others. The dog is not housebroken. Always remember, allergies and fear of animals are not valid reasons for denying access or refusing service to an individual with a service animal. Additionally, when you are requesting a service animal to not be allowed in the classroom or activity, always remember to focus on the animal is not being allowed. The student is always welcomed. Can an emotional support animal be excluded? The university may exclude an emotional support animal from university housing if the animal is not housebroken, would cause substantial damage to the property of others, would pose a direct threat to the health or safety of others, would fundamentally alter the nature of a program or activity, is not being cared for by the individual. Remember, the person must still be allowed within premises or given services. Here's some basic etiquette on how to work with people on campus to have service or emotional support animals. Don't pet the animal. This deters the animal from doing its job. Don't feed the animal. Treats are praise and the handler praises the animal. By feeding the animal, you might be reinforcing the wrong behaviors. Don't distract the animal. This can result in the handler being hurt. Don't interfere. The animal must pay attention to the handler in order to work. Don't make loud noises. This can confuse, startle, or cause a false alert. Don't attempt to control or take the leash from the handler. The handler is the leader not you. One of the general rules that we always mention to people when handling an animal or trying to engage an animal that is a service animal or an emotional support animal is to treat the animal like the, an extension of the person's body. You wouldn't touch somebody else, why would you touch the animal? So now we're going to go into some vignettes. These are situations that have happened at FIU. These are real situations. The names and stories have all been changed. So please follow along with us and we'll tell you how these situations occurred and what finally happened as part of the DRC's intervention. Two dogs in an art studio. The scenario here is that we had two students in an art studio. One had a service animal, the other one had an emotional support animal. Unfortunately, at this time, the professor wasn't well informed of the difference between a service animal and an emotional support animal. So the professor allowed the two students to bring their animals into the studio. Since the emotional support animal was not properly trained, it started trying to play with the other dog, which was a trained service animal. That dog had been trained to identify certain allergens that the student was not allowed to come in contact with. Because the emotional support animal kept trying to engage the service animal in play and distracted the animal. The service animal was not able to detect that a certain allergen was in the materials being used at, in the studio. 
and the student had an allergic reaction. Fortunately, it wasn't a very severe allergic reaction, but we're not always that lucky. The student eventually complained to the DRC and the DRC had to engage the professor and the student with the emotional support animal, train the professor in what the process is and what the laws are in regard to these animals, as well as what FIU's policies are regarding these two types of animals in the classroom, and we were able to finish the semester. The key takeaway from this scenario is Whenever you see an animal in the classroom, if they're not behaving like a typical service animal, which is they're usually sitting or lying down at the foot of the handler, ready to do its work, you might want to ask a student the two questions that we talked about. One is a subjective question, just a yes or no. Is this a medically necessary service animal? The other one is a more subjective question. What task has this animal been trained to do? We're not asking for a diagnosis. We're not asking for a card or a doctor's note. We're just asking for a, a description of what behaviors the animal has been trained to do. The correct answer to this second question should sound something like, my dog has been trained to notice how my sugar levels are and whether I need to engage in um, insulin or a snack. My dog has been trained to notify me if I'm about to get a seizure so that I can get into a safe position. My dog has been trained to assist me with any objects that may be in front of me or to alert me of any danger that might be coming my way. Those are not all the right answers, but that's what it should sound like. What would you do? Part two, cat on a shelf. So this next story is about a cat that was in the library. And just how you may be imagining it, yes, the cat got away from the student and it started jumping from one shelf to the other. In this situation, the librarian that was on duty called the DRC for some assistance. And we had to go there in person. Fortunately, by the time we got there, the cat had been seized by the student, but we had to inform the student that although the cat was approved as an emotional support animal that the student could have in their housing area, they were not allowed to bring it to the library. Since emotional support animals are not trained animals, they don't know that they have to stay with the student at all times. They are not tethered with a leash as per the law's requirements. This causes an unsafe environment for students and other animals. What would you do? Part three. What about that dog I saw when... So this happens all the time. You see some dogs around campus, you don't really know whether to approach them or not. What I always recommend to people is that they consider probable cause. What is causing you to approach this student with an animal that is alerting you to something that might not be right? So here are some examples. Is the dog being intimidating or aggressive with other students or animals? This is not behavior typical of a service animal unless they are trying to protect the student in a dangerous situation. But you shouldn't see a dog snarling, growling, or being aggressive with other members of our FIU community. What about a dog that's barking or whining because it's hungry or thirsty? Well, that's also not behavior that's typical of a service animal. Service animals are typically trained to stay quiet, to just heed every command of the trainer, and it, not disrupt the environment that they're in. So if you see a dog that's barking a lot, whining, and just causing a general disruption in the classroom or general facility, you can approach that student and let them know that this animal is being disruptive. You can ask them the two questions that we've mentioned. And if you need assistance, as always, call the DRC or FIU police. Last but not least, what if you see a dog just you know, walking next to its handler? It's not leashed. The handler mentions, well, you know, it's been trained to heal and, you know, walk right next to me. Well, that's unfortunately not within the law's uh, regulations. No matter what, a dog has to be tethered, meaning it has to have a leash. If you see a dog that's just walking next to the owner and it does not have a leash, this is a big red flag that you might not have a properly trained service animal in your midst. You can approach the student, ask the two questions that we've mentioned, and follow along with the appropriate action depending on the answer to those questions. As always, if you don't feel comfortable doing this or if you need support, call DRC, call the leadership of your area, or call FIU police. What would you do? Part four, what about that other animal? So unfortunately, you can go online and buy a vest in any a, a number of your favorite shopping websites. You can put a vest on your cat, gerbil, or on your parrot and you can have it labeled with a number of titles. I always like to give people benefit of the doubt. They probably do think that this animal is providing a service by making them feel better. Unfortunately, under the eyes of the law and FIU's policies, this is not a legal service animal. This animal could be a detriment to the public health and safety of the classroom, 
the dormitory, or general environment of the campus. If you see an animal that is not a dog or a miniature horse, it is not a service animal, period. This animal can be requested to be taken out of the library, out of your lab, out of your classroom. The only area that an animal that, like this is allowed is in the student's dormitory. You can connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and by going to our website, drc.fiu.edu. We hope that you've enjoyed this presentation. If you wish to contact us in person or by phone, on the MMC campus, we're located in GC 190, and you can call us at 305-348-3532. In the BBC campus, we're located in WUC 131, and you can call us at 305-919-5345. We hope that you've enjoyed this presentation and have learned more about emotional support animals and service animals. They are valued members of our FIU community and allow students and visitors, faculty and staff to better engage FIU in all its educational opportunities.